Hey everybody, this is Bentley Compost Guy Christy here, and today I want to talk to you about vermicompost. Now, what you see in front of you are three different bins of vermicompost. Now, with a tendency for people, uh, especially people who are fairly new to vermicomposting, is to just sort of hear the word vermicompost or worm castings and to basically just assume that they are all one and the same and that the term vermicompost um, when used applies to the exact same material. Well, what I'm here to tell you today is that that's definitely not the case. Now, there's certain qualities that you're going to be looking for in a good vermicompost, um, but generally speaking, there's a, there's a lot of different factors that can determine you know, what kind of product that you have and, and, and what exactly it is. Now, first of all, let's talk about this worm castings, vermicompost, sort of confusing issue. It's used interchange, interchange, interchangeably. I use the term interchangeably, just like many other people, but really the technical sort of definition here of vermicompost is that it's worm castings along with other materials that aren't necessarily processed by the worm. So worm castings and vermicompost are technically different, but you'll notice that a lot of people, myself included, do basically use them interchangeably. So don't let that phase you. Now, a high quality vermicompost, you might say that a high quality vermicompost does contain a high proportion of worm castings. But it totally depends on your application. What exactly are you doing with this material? You now, there's different grades of vermicompost, a coarse vermicompost, all the way up to a very fine vermicompost that's been screened very well. And, you know, it, it depends on what you want to do with it in terms of, of how you uh, determine the quality of it. So, the three ones that I have here today are first of all, this is a farmyard manure vermicompost that has been screened down to a quarter inch. It's very nice stuff. This is actually stuff that I sell locally here. And next we have a, another beautiful mix of vermicompost that came from my Worm Factory 360 system. And I wrote some blog posts about that, that you can, and you can see the harvesting process. This has actually been sitting and curing for a number of months actually. And this is quite a bit similar to your typical plastic worm bin vermicompost. Now, generally speaking, when you first harvest a plastic worm bin, it isn't going to be quite this nice. It's going to be probably more moisture and look a bit more like mud. And that's why sometimes this curing process, just sort of letting it sit, getting some oxygen in there, can be really, really important for finishing it off. But very, very nice stuff. It has a sticky consistency. I love this type of vermicompost as well. But it is different. This is more of a, a powdery stuff, and whereas this is sort of more of a gooey you know, a bit different and, and quite a bit darker. You'll notice that the, the food waste vermicompost do tend to be darker. And again, it is, it is a different material. You know, both of them are going to have, you know, good quality benefits for your plants, but, you know, it, you may see slightly different results. Now this last one is from my worm in, and that's a system that I'm, I'm probably going to be making some, some videos on just to sort of tell you a little bit more about that system. But this is really, really beautiful stuff as well. And this is actually some of the nicest stuff I've seen from a small home indoor system. So pretty cool. Now it has actually been screened, similar to this, down to about a quarter inch. And so that's probably part of the reason it has such a nice refined look to it. But it's also quite a bit drier. You know, this sort of came right out of the system, was screened, and then it was just like this. Okay, whereas this, like I said, had to sit for a few months. I mean, it didn't have to sit for a few months, but it did sit for a few months. And, but you know, the, the one, one of the, the qualities that are definitely consistent amongst these three is dark color, somewhat crumbly, whether it's a bit sticky or not, it's still sort of crumbly, and that nice earthy smell. So that's what you're going to be looking for in a vermicompost. You don't want this sort of stinky anaerobic smelling stuff or stuff that's overly, even just the appearance of it, overly wet. Um, it should be sort of a nice looking soil, I guess, for, for lack of a better term, um, by the time it's, it's ready to be used, okay? So the smell test is a good way to determine and even just the general appearance of it. So that's basically it. I don't want to take up too much time in this particular video, but I'm sure I will be talking more about vermicompost and other vermicomposting topics in upcoming videos. So once again, I'm having the compost guy, Christy, and I'm having way too much fun with worms.